How's it going guys? I'm back at it again in here for another video for you guys for today and this time I'm in here for my Money in the Bank 2012 pay per view review and I'm not going to be in here for a whole long review on the pay per view and I was going to do this as the pay per view was over but I was hanging out with family so that's why I was unable to make it to the pay per view pre show as much as I did want to which is at 3pm on Sunday so hopefully you guys had a great time for those of you who were able to make it to the show so for the next one, I will be around for the SummerSlam pay-per-view pre-show, so with that being said, I will be there, definitely no doubt, so be on the lookout for that. Now, as for Money in the Bank as a whole, I thought it was a good pay-per-view. Normally, with Money in the Bank, it is a good pay-per-view, and it's one of those pay-per-views that are like a big four pay-per-view to me, in my personal opinion, and I really enjoyed it. And with the first match, we started things off. With the SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match, and I'm not going to name every competitor who was on there. You can check out my predictions video for that, and as well check that out on WWE.com for the latest on who was in the Money in the Bank ladder match. But I thought this was a flat out fantastic way to kick things off for the show. Christian was one of those guys in there that was one of the MVPs of the match. So it was Dolph Ziggler and Cody Rhodes, and at one point you didn't know who exactly was going to win. Uh, we almost saw a repeat from. The previous year was Sin Cara being taken out as well, even though it wasn't as bad as the last time he was in the Money in the Bank, so I was a little bit worried that this match was going to fuck him over again, but that wasn't the case this time around, so that was cool there. And at one point, at the end of the match, Christian was about to win in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and I really wanted him to win, and he came so damn close, but just when he was about to win it, then Darth Ziggler comes back out of nowhere and wins the entire thing, which is awesome. I give props to all those guys who were able to do what they had to do just to get the money to make grief picks, and that's what makes this match just as fun. And I was actually watching this too with my cousin with me, and he barely watches wrestling, and he was mucking out too as well for this. And I was hoping to have him on the pre-show, but we were busy doing things, and we went to the lake, so we had a fun time there. And uh, even with watching this pay-per-view, it was also just as fun. So I made up for a good match in a great way. Just saw things off as badly as I wanted Christian to win. But damn, he did not do it. There's always next time. And you always have to have Christian on there for the master of the ladder in the Money in the Bank ladder match. So props to all those guys. Especially to uh, Dolph Ziggler and Cody Rose who did their best. And Dolph Ziggler did have a tease later on in the night in trying to cash in right after... A little bit after the World Heavyweight Championship matchup between Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio, and that is the next match that was after that match, and that one was also a good match there, and uh, also uh, with the Money in the Bank ladder match, we saw some good spots there. So uh, overall, that was a good match, and I enjoyed that. But getting back into the World Heavyweight Championship matchup with Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio, this match was supposed to happen at No Way Out, but we all know. Alberto Del Rio was out due to concussions and that match wasn't able to happen so we did have that match take place last night at Money in the Bank and you know with that it was a pretty good match between the two we see some good spots between Del Rio and as well Sheamus and Sheamus looking to hopefully get another one since he's been on a roll as of late I was going full behind Del Rio on this one hoping to see a new World Heavyweight Champion but that wasn't the case we saw kind of a little help from Ricardo but not so much and in the end Shamus was able to get the win and like I said we had that little tease by Josh Ligler and wanting to become World Champion which is good that he still has the money to make brief pace and hopefully he'll wait for a perfect time cash it in have a good title reign and not like that bullshit title defense and reign that he had not too long ago where it lasted for about a day not even a day it was like only for a few minutes and that was it which was really stupid but hopefully this time around Dolph Ziggler will actually win the world title and keep it this time that's what I'm hoping for there with the next match we had a tag team match this one we had the primetime players Titus O'Neil and Darren Young taking on with their opponents with Epico and Prima with this this was one of those special bonus matches that they have for Money in the Bank and this one was a good match and it really didn't matter who won this match to me since I like both tag teams in this one and yes even though Titus O'Neil and Darren Young are the number one contenders for the tag team championships and when Kofi Kingston and our truth came out I kind of thought they were going to have a bonus tag team championship match but that didn't happen and I wasn't able to make it to the pre-show on time and since I just came 
right after I came back from the lake and everything and hanging out with my family, I was able to just watch the pay-per-view in itself and I missed the pre-show so I wasn't aware of what happened so if you guys want feel free to fill me in on what happened with that even though it doesn't really matter too much and I didn't really give a fuck about that all too much and everything but I'm sure it was a good match and everything so I'm not really that worried about it but as far as for that tag team match you know I thought it was a good match Epico and Primo ended up getting the win here and Titus O'Neil and Darren Young did not get their win so maybe by SummerSlam I'm hoping and this will be the most likely thing to happen we'll probably have Darren Young and Titus O'Neil face Kofi Kingston and r truth can probably win the Tag Team Championships there. And I love the whole thing what AEW is doing. And just uh, talking uh, to Titus O'Neil and Darren Young and getting cheap heat from the crowd. I think that's some of the best stuff ever. I'm really liking the character that AEW has right now than the previous character that he has. And I seem to enjoy that more than that one that where he had when he was doing the Abraham Washington show and everything. But overall, I think it was a good match and Epico and Primo get the win there. For the next match, we had a WWE Championship on the line, and yes, this was not the main event, unfortunately. I figure since we had the WWE Championship with Daniel Bryan and CM Punk, you'd think the WWE would send the crowd home happy and actually have that match be in the main event, and it's been a hell of a long time since we've seen the actual WWE Championship be defended in the main event. But you know what, I'm not going to shit all over it. It was a great match between Daniel Bryan and CM Punk. And the match was made a no disqualification match. And AJ didn't really do too much of an interference there. She just did her thing. And she just really kind of in a way, sort of, a uh, little bit, just called it down the middle and did the best that she could. And we still don't know who she's going to go with. I kind of figure AJ was going to help Daniel Bryan here and go with Daniel Bryan and help him win. But that wasn't the case. Uh, we see the use of a steel chair, which is awesome. We see the Singapore cane, which in these type of matches, we only see one weapon usage in this type of stipulation match. But these two really did their best here and pulled out everything and did just about anything and used anything that they saw. So that was cool. We see them brawl on the outside for a while. Uh, we see some good spots here in this match as well. Uh, we kind of saw a little repeat of what AJ did. On kissing on CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and putting them through a table as well. And we had a good finish to end things off for the actual match in itself. So definitely one of my favorite matches of the year and it has the potential to be one of the match of the year candidates. And uh, with this, I can see this feud ending at SummerSlam between CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. And yes, CM Punk is still the WWE Champion, which I'm not really pissed off about either. I like CM Punk too myself and I like both of the guys going in there. Even though I want Daniel Bryan to win this one, but it is what it is, and that's fine. I don't mind CM Punk winning, but it would have been more better to me, honestly, to have Daniel Bryan come out with the win and become WWE Champion and have somewhat of a long title ring. But hey, it is what it is when it comes to that. The next match, of course, yes, we had a Ryback match, and this one was actually a legit match where Ryback didn't have jobbers job to him, and we had Tyler Rex and Kurt Harkins, and they were actually taking control of Ryback, and Ryback was trying his best to fight back here, and I thought that was cool that they actually had some legit competition for him, and having him do his best there and have a bit of a struggle uh, with him, with Carter Hawkins and Tyler Rex, and the last time Ryback faced Tyler Rex, it was kind of sort of like that, so I thought that was cool, so it looks like those uh, two teams, if you will, between Kurt Hawkins and Tyler Rex will be feuding with Ryback for a while like we've been seeing so there's nothing wrong with that of course Ryback ends up getting the win there and Ryback is still basically undefeated so nothing really too wrong with that you know I didn't mind it I thought it was a pretty good match so that's what happened with that then we get into the main event and that's why we had the Raw Money in the Bank ladder match where the Miz returned I didn't get to talk about that earlier that's why holy crap the Miz returned and that was really cool and a very nice surprise I was hoping maybe we'll get a Rey Mysterio return since I've been wanting to have Rey Mysterio come back and make it somewhat even and maybe have a few other people want to qualify since they've been out for a while but hey it is what it is and it was really awesome literally to see the Miz back there and uh, with that you know this was a good match too don't get me wrong we did have some good spots here we had everybody uh, try to bury the big show with the ladders uh, I guess that was pretty cool. We see John Cena do some spots in here 
and take some bumps there, so that was cool. Uh, at one point, you thought Big Show was going to win. Chris Jericho almost had to win a couple of times, which was my main pick there. And this one wasn't really as better as the Raw Money in the Bank match, uh, the SmackDown Money in the Bank match, uh, I should say. So the Raw one wasn't really as good as the first match that we have for the SmackDown side, but I still enjoyed it nonetheless, and I'm not going to really shit about it either. And John Cena ended up winning the entire thing and winning his first ever Money in the Bank ladder match. And, you know, with that, even though um, this was the main event and we didn't really get to have the WWE Championship matchup in the main event, you know, I'm not really going to bitch about that. It still made out for a good match and one of the better John Cena matches since his match with Brock Lesnar. So, uh, with this... Uh, I'm not really too mad that John Cena won the match, you know, I kind of saw it coming, so, uh, you know, it is what it is when it comes to that, and John Cena has been doing that a lot too, so it's not like he's been in the title picture, even though he has been in the main event, so anything can really happen, who knows, he might even be the first person to actually lose the money in the bank briefcase for the first time, you never know when it comes to that, so anything can really happen, but I do think he deserves that win, and he's been putting people over, like I said before, so, you know, it's fine. I really thought Chris Jericho was going to win it, and uh, he can still have the Money in the Bank briefcase and still tour with Fozzie, but, you know, obviously that didn't happen. So, overall, I thought Money in the Bank was a good pay-per-view. I enjoy it, and another good show, and it made up for that crappy raw that we had before actual Money in the Bank pay-per-view with the go-home show, so that made up for it, which is good, and hopefully by... Raw things will be good for this week's Raw. So with that being said, go follow me on Twitter at David Rivera 1989 for the latest. I will be doing my Twitter reactions as well each and every week and each and every time there's a pay-per-view too. I will be talking about that. And with that, also go check out the Wrestling for Wings account, which will be down there below in the description box for you guys to check out. And go check out SD Wrestling Live too as well. For the pay-per-view pre-shows, for those of you who weren't able to make it like I did, go check it out there in the link down below in the description box. With that being said, also leave a like on this video. I'm Fort Money Project in here for my Money in the Bank 2012 pay-per-view review. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and as well, leave your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment box, and feel free to leave a video spots. Until then, have a great rest of the week. I'm not too sure when I'll be back for my next video. Look for the Q&A soon. And still continue to leave me some questions. I got great questions so far. So be on the lookout for that guys. And until then. I'll see you whenever the next video may be.